Hey, you're listening to Soul Games, the podcast. Where we explore new ways to enjoy the game of life with a touch more soul. <laughs> and a lot of fun. So let's play. Shall we? Hey, here we are. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is your host, Brady, and I am with my co-host, Emily Capshaw. Hey, hey. Today happy is... Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. Today's episode is called Woo Woo Magic or Phony with our guest, Blue. Uh, Blue, welcome to the podcast, the Soul Games Podcast. Yahoo! Thanks for having me. Super excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as as Emily and I were talking about this particular show, which we're really excited to do, Em, em was like, we have to have Blue on this show. She would be perfect, perfect for this show. Um, she just was like, woo woo, like, yes, Blue, yes, 100%. <laughs> so I, this is the first time I've actually... <laughs> this is the first time I've actually met you, um, but I am ex- I sort of known of you. <laughs> You're, this is perfect. I've known of you and some stories that that Em has shared. But Em, if you want to sort of like introduce Blue, how you know her, and then we'll have Blue sort of introduce herself. Yes, I would love to. I would love to introduce this magical human for the magic episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the most notable professional piece of the introduction is that blue is also a podcast host herself she hosts the deja blue podcast which i was fortunate enough to be a guest on back in the early days back in the og like before there was video like before the big blow up and the come up and so it's been so beautiful to watch it just grow and grow and grow and expand and just be on the front row seat of watching blue's whole life explode and grow and expand since we first met we first met um several years ago now and just really hit it off and had this kindredness and a lot of similarities and both our personality and also our childhood traumas and (laughs) all the things (laughs) aligned (laughs) and um yeah she's a she's a true example of how devotion and commitment to your inner work just effortless, effortlessly magnetizes so much beauty in your life externally. And it's been an honor to watch her commitment to herself and to making a difference in this world and just seeing that continue to grow and to cheer her on. And I'm honored to call her a friend and a sister on this life path together. We've had so many epic chats in real life. And so it just makes all the sense in the world to, to do one on a microphone again. So Wow. What an introduction. How did that feel, Blue? <laughs> She's giving us the heart, the heart, uh, the heart hands. <laughs> heart hands. Oh, Blue, anything you want to say about yourself? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's so nice to be introduced. I'm always introducing other people to the podcast and just to be able to be introduced by you, Emily. I'm like, oh, I'm heart swelling. I'm opening up already and unraveling in your presence. So it's such a gift. To be here. <laughs> I'm so grateful. And thank you so much for your beautiful words that touched me so deeply. Um, and do I want to say a few words? Well, just hi. And um, I love mm. that, that <laughs> Brady, you're like, so, you know, this is the this is the title of the podcast and it blues woo woo so here she is <laughs> i've definitely been labeled woo woo more times than i could count if i got a dollar for every time i was labeled woo woo, i would be on a yacht in the middle of the caribbean right now um <laughs> uh so I'm, so I'm yes i'm so stoked to talk about it and also um mm. yeah i also want to like i do love mm. the difference between like woo woo mm. magic and phony because yeah. there is a whole yeah. soup of this yeah. in the spiritual community in the conscious community i just went to the conscious life expo and it was like whoa <laughs> like to see all of the individuals in <laughs> yeah. one place and all wow. three topics being merged in yeah. one space and the importance of mm-hmm. discernment in the spiritual community mm, like discernment is one of the greatest yeah. tools to navigate this realm with and so um i'm yeah. super excited to dive into it today and i'm really honored and yeah. grateful to be here so thanks for having Aww. me <laughs> thank you no this is going to be amazing well let's kind of set up the conversation sort of give it give a framework for what each of these kind of words mean and for those who don't who are not aware of this 
term woo woo. Like this is a conversation around the mysterious, the spiritual sides of life that don't always make sense with the logical mind. It's, you know, th things sort of fall in these categories is sort of the categories we've made for this show. But the woo woo is sort of the out there spiritual that actually is true, I think, in, in its own way. And it's mysterious. Maybe we don't understand it, but like it's kind of legit for for the sake of this conversation. That's we'll sort of put it in that category, and you guys can put it whatever category you want. But I think of you know the the slang word woo woo um, is. I looked up the definition, and it said a person readily accepting supernatural, paranorm paranormal, occult, or pseudo scientific phenomena or emotion based beliefs and explanations. So interesting, interesting sort of like way to define it. Um, I think people that are just open to like the mysterious spiritual side of life. And then magic. Um, <laughs> magic is interesting, right? Because magic can be, it can be kind of the paranormal side of magic or it can be the illusion side of magic. Um, the paranormal side is where the effects are claimed to be created through supernatural means and the sort of the the illusion side is where you're sort of performing an art, you're entertaining an audience through tricks, effects, and illusions. I think of magic kind of going either way. It can either kind of be a fake thing or it could be a real thing. Or maybe sometimes it actually doesn't matter if it's fake or it's real because it's it's doing something. It's sort of affecting something. And sometimes in this, like it actually doesn't matter. But then there is the full-on phony, right? There is the fake, the bogus, the counterfeit, the false, the thing that just isn't it. And um, I think that when we get into this mysterious sort of side of life and experiencing spirituality, we just kind of come in contact with all of it. And something, you know, the interesting thing about this conversation is that something could be actually like woo woo and beautiful for somebody and like real. And then for somebody else, it could actually be not real, which I think that's why it's such a nuanced conversation. So what do you guys uh, think about those three terms and how would you sort of frame this conversation in what you've experienced? I'd say I'd, I agree with most of that. To me, I think magic, when I think of magic, I think less of illusion. I would put illusion in its own category of just illusion. And when I think <laughs> of magic, I think of the real. <laughs> like, you know, okay. I'm a believer okay. in like real yeah. magic. And like, I know that the word can be used for either. But to me, when I think of the word magic, I think of seeing the wonder and everything like everything is magic mm. to me this whole experience mm. is magic like mm. the fact that there i'm looking at a tree out my window and i'm like what is that that's magic the fact that we're mm. here and talking and understanding mm. and making sense of the sounds coming out of our mouths is magic like mm. i think sometimes we think of magic as something like there's a separation between oh that's normal and that's mm. magic and to me that line's really blurry i'm like normal yeah. what's normal about any of this it's all magic you know Mm. And then there's there's that kind of supernatural that we think is like extra magic. <laughs> mm. But to me, it's kind of yeah. my whole world is is like that. You know, I see it all as magic. I, I, like sometimes I'll just look at my dog and I'm like, this is a furry thing that wags its tail when it's happy and like <laughs> loves me and looks like a mystical creature. What is that? Like, how did you call them? So, Where did you hail in from, you crazy, wild, unconditioning, loving fireball? <laughs> exactly. Oh my god, that's insane. Blue and I have like twin sidekick dogs too. That's yeah. great. <laughs> we both have our mascots. <laughs> yeah. How yeah, about you? Do you have? I would yeah. have to say, um, I love, I love the descriptions in the sense of it just allows me to have a deeper level of context of also recognizing that I've checked, I think probably every box, which is like, oh yeah, I've definitely <laughs> played in the woo, I've definitely experienced a profound amount of magic, and I've probably played definitely in the end, especially in the beginning of my journey around just like yeah that's just not in bro <laughs> like it's okay you know like you've got to like <laughs> also go to the realm of it not it so that you actually know what it is with the polarity and the contrast to be able to experience uh, what it is and so i think first and foremost mm -hmm. i want to transcend any judgment that comes with each definition mm -hmm. or label yeah, and just allowing sure. ourselves to be in the inquiry of from our unique perspective right because there's eight just under eight billion yeah. people on the planet and there's there's just under eight mm -hmm billion realities happening simultaneously and if you truly believe it then that's also the reality in which you're creating and so who are we or i to say that's right and that's wrong and it's actually about transcending mm -hmm, the binary yeah. of there being a right and a wrong and it's basically mm -hmm. resonance right like what actually resonates 
on a cellular level like there's certain people that I'll come across or will say certain things they're like oh yeah I received this download and I was told the message that I'm one of the greatest healers on the planet now for me that actually is some sort of like god complex and I my body just goes like like kind of doesn't fully Mm -hmm. resonate now they believe it through their lens from their internal projection Mm -hmm. out into the external reality they believe it in every cell Mm -hmm. of their being it's a maybe based off of the vibrational existence we live in they the universe will continue to confirm that to be some sort of truth for them and so it's super important to recognize there is not a truth there is not a one truth with a capital t and this is the way that it is there is resonance and there's dissonance and there is Mm. perspective and there is um placebo right so there's Mm -hmm. so many layers to this and so i'm more operating from a perspective of does that resonate or does that hit in a way that i'm like i don't feel like that's actually my truth um and one of my teachers said to me once i don't know what the truth is but i know what love feels like and i follow that and so ultimately, mm. that's really the way to navigate for me this dimension or this experience is, is like, does that feel closer to love or does that actually feel like more like division? Mm. Does that feel yeah. more actually hierarchical as opposed to uniting us as one, right? So that's the way yeah. that I navigate mm. through the three topics that you've mentioned. Yeah, I actually mm. love that. I, I love, I love Emily that you kind of brought. I magic. love love too. <laughs> <laughs> I love love. <laughs> love. <laughs> I love that Emily. You sort of frame magic as like magic is this thing. It's magic, right? And sort of woo woo is kind of this out there spiritual thing that also can be true. And then there's the phony and the fake. And sort of that blue, like it's so true, right? Like in the sense of there are things that resonate with us in different seasons of our life mm-hmm. that actually feel true that get us from the next sort of next space or the next place you know like i tell my four-year-old nephew larkin like if he does something well i'm like you're the greatest in the world right like is he the greatest in the world no he's not but he's like four and for him to hear that and to feel that is like really helpful in the development of his personhood in a sense right Mm -hmm. like sort of some sense of pride in the self and the development of a sense of self and so anyway i love it like framing that like this is this is a this is a it's a a nuanced conversation with sort of nuanced perspectives and all sorts of um, different ways of seeing things and then navigating things throughout life. And re- regardless of what we decide, what is what, we're going to have so much fun talking about it. So is that so you guys <laughs> down? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's do it. Well, let's hit the first segment. Let's get personal. Let's get personal. 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 Let's get personal. Oh, that's so <laughs> catchy. Oh my God. I need that as my ringtone or something. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Emily actually created that beat and then I came up with the um the little the little tune to it, but it was a fun way to sort of integrate our music aspects into this podcast. So I'm inspired. Our- <laughs> All right. What's, let's get personal. Uh, what's happened in our personal lives around the woo-woo, the magic, and the phony? Who wants to start? Mm. I vote I Emily. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is a good one to start with because, like, I, you know, I'm undecided. And you'll, okay. got, you'll hear why as I go into the story of, like, where it falls. Mm. Might mm. be a little bit of overlap of these things, and I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on this story. But... You know, in the spiritual world, at some point, we all encounter some psychics. You know, oh, you got to have the, yes. you gotta encounter psychics. So we're going to chat about a psychic, an encounter with a, a self-proclaimed psychic that I had. Mm. Um, and this was through a friend that I was super close with at the time who found the psychic and was like, this is, this person is Jesus. They're like, they're, you know, they're <laughs> this and that, like really caught up in the guru this the guru energy around this woman and so i'd heard all these things about her and i was over at her house one day and she was like oh she's coming over and like you'll get to meet her and she's so amazing and so i'm like okay i'm so curious to meet this woman this woman walks in and like right off the bat like looks like corella deville like already so and that, not to like judge the person's look but i'm like mm, you got some villainy vibes to you <laughs> you got some villainy vibes and she comes in and she's like, 
immediately walks over to the couch and like very she's like very dramatic already off the bat and like kind of full herself like doesn't really give me the light of day she walks over and like puts a hand on the couch she goes is this a new couch oh my god "Yeah, yeah it's a new couch and she puts her hand on it and does like a that's so raven like i'm receiving a vision like oh, very God. dramatically that's so <laughs> stop it <laughs> she was like an asshole raven moment and she's like this isn't a new couch you've been lied to <laughs> like this this couch was like she's like reading the history of the couch she's like it was in a showroom and then it was this and and then she just like walks away from it like she can't handle it anymore it's like you got to get rid of the couch like and my friend's like okay yeah i gotta get rid of like eating it up and i'm just all my red flags going off i'm like i don't trust this woman like total phony definitely like and my friend is very wealthy so it was like i just had my red flag of like Mm. you're taking advantage of this person this woman's so expensive she's charging so much money for like all of this psychic information which I also is usually a red flag for me of like, I get in one sense making money off of that as a business and being compensated mm-hmm. for your gift. And then there's a line, you know, sometimes where it feels a little bit like you're taking advantage with that mm. stuff. Rio feels so, it. She's going, she's barking. Yeah, Rio's yeah. like, bullshit, bullshit. That's like <laughs> bullshit. So did she say anything specific to you? Like a give like you a reading? So I'm convinced this woman is a phony. And then she looks, she walks over to me and she's like, you look like you're not feeling well. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm feeling fine. Like, I feel great. And she's like, really? I'm pretty sure you don't feel well. And it's like totally that moment from Bridesmaids when she's yeah, like eating the, almonds. eating the mints and like, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, actually. I feel great. Like sweat's tripping down. But yeah. as she's saying this, I start to not feel well. And then she, without consent, puts her hand on my stomach and is like, look here, let me help you. And she puts her hand on my stomach And then I started to like really not feel well. And then I'm like sweating and like felt like I was going to throw up. And I was like, I need to go like lay down. And I was like, did this woman just like make me sick? What? It was so strange. And so, yeah, it then like all that to that. The story goes on basically into her like convincing my friend, like trying to turn my friend against me, convincing her that I'm like this evil person who murdered her in a past life and I'm not to be trusted and all of this stuff. But it just left me in such a weird place because I was so convinced she was a phony. But then that happened and I was like, is she just like dark? I don't know what to what? make of this. And I still don't know because there was so much phony vibes. And then that happened and I'm like, I don't like definitely there was something off in my body that didn't resonate. But then there was like a real experience. Maybe it was placebo. Wait, when she touched know. when she touched your stomach, you then started feeling like sick or like nauseous yeah. or something. Yeah. But what? I didn't before. I felt fine. I felt totally fine before. <laughs> and it's such a mystery to me. Still, I'm like, I think about this woman sometimes and I was like, what? I don't know where to I don't know what to make of her. Blue. I don't like I'm like yeah, so give me you guys tell blue, me about help us. What was help that? What was help that with blue? <laughs> <laughs> because you gotta know i don't know <laughs> i mean first and foremost right like i i wasn't there so i can't get like a full read i can only just get it from like your share but no let's intuition... like judge her let's like judge her super hard oh, yeah. okay i'm kidding go ahead damn, <laughs> damn what a total bitch <laughs> um... <laughs> she's definitely corella yeah, oh my god she's like In totally a bad sorceress <laughs> um i would like <laughs> First and foremost, like my number one piece is empowering people to trust their intuition. Like, like it may not be everyone's mm-hmm. intuition, but it's your intuition for a reason. And it's so important not to ignore the cues, right? Like what is literally your gut was talking to you. And in the presence of this individual, mm-hmm. you're, you felt nauseous, right? So like your body is telling mm-hmm. you no. And it doesn't matter, like, because the five senses will try and justify and go, well, maybe she's right, or maybe she's picking up on something, or she looks like this, and she's dressing like this. And so the five senses are going to absorb what they pick up and then create a, an experience and then kind of create a label or a de- define it and box it and then place it in some sort of, like, 
a mental box in your mind of what that experience was. However, mm. first and foremost, the thing that stands out to me is your body's response mm. and your immediate yeah. contraction when she walked in the room, your immediate contraction mm. when she talked about the sofa, your immediate nausea when she touched you. Mm. Like these are all mm -hmm. signs of telling you that there is, it's like literally run. Like, like go in the opposite yeah. direction yeah. of this individual yeah. what she's wielding is most likely the power of her attention and her intention because if somebody believes something enough they can access that realm and so if she believes mm -hmm. that she has superpowers and she believes that she doesn't like you they're gonna go her attention and intention is going to be placed on you and it's going to create a strong mm -hmm. reaction from you and so then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you know you're gonna go into this like physical experience and your body is like screaming no there's certain people that I'm around that all of a sudden I get a headache. Maybe they're standing mm -hmm. in the presence of me smiling and saying all the right things, but they're judging the fuck out of me. And they're going to go talk to their friend mm -hmm. afterwards about me behind my back in a negative way. My body picks up on it and it translates it as a headache and goes, Arr. and like, like actually this person doesn't have the purest intentions in your presence. And so that's the one thing that really stands out to me is your body was talking, trust mm. your intuition, whether she's tapping into superhuman mm. abilities or not. I think just being human is super in the fact that she can place her attention, intention, create that placebo within her own consciousness that she believes it to the point where she can access those states. Yeah, mm. probably most likely. Whether she's using it for, mm. for bringing actual like peace into people's beings? No. Does yeah. dark magic exist? I truly believe it does right like i think that the yeah. light exists and you've got to have the polarity for it to exist so you've also got to have dark magic too mm. and it sounds like mm. based off of your initial read you picked up on that there was some like dodgy energy going on because you're probably right mm. damn hello let's go let's go <laughs> you solved a like multiple year mystery in like two minutes i grew up watching and nancy that's why drew blue here I i'm like bringing sh shamanism and nancy drew together and i'm like hey you literally are like the shamanic nancy drew that is that should be your new bio the shamanic nancy drew here yeah. here to support that's amazing so like whether if it's true or not like I liked what you commented, Blue, about like, are you are you as a vessel in the world bringing love and peace and joy and sort of these this experience to another, or are you like causing people to get sick? Right, like both <laughs> actually might be true in the sense of what you're doing, but like, what is the one that resonates at the level? um that actually is helpful right yeah and i love taking that into kind of a more non-dual place too of like mm -hmm. not feeling like you need to put it in this box of the logical mind of trying to make sense of it mm -hmm. on an objective scale mm -hmm. but like at the end of the day just coming back to the body as the guide of that's all i need to know like all i need to know is what is my experience in my body and let that mm -hmm. move me forward in my decisions like none of the rest I don't need to figure out the rest because yeah. that's that's the only thing that is really real in this moment mm -hmm. is my experience in my own body. So mm -hmm. the rest is that. up yeah. to the rest is subjective Beautiful. up to like your map of consciousness. So you're going to well, project your map too. of consciousness the onto the ideas. rest of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's so interesting. I have, an, I have a story that that reminds me of, but yeah, I want to check in blue if you want to jump in first. I mean, I have so no many one. stories that I'm also pulling a blank. It's like there's a flick book of experiences where I'm like, what the fuck? But like, I really, I think that because you've got one like right, um, I was in okay, okay, to okay, go okay. that string. So I flew over to Maui uh, a few years ago. And <laughs> while I was on the island, I was seeing some friends. Um, my friend Elena Dominguez, who's been a Soul Games expert in the past and some other people in we did the whole road to Hana thing on the back side of the road to Hana. Um, they said, Hey, um, there's this entity clearer dude that lives over here. And I was like, let's go see him. Like, what are we doing? Of course we're going to go see the entity clearer. And we show up in this like double wide, uh, temple thing. And mm -hmm. I walk in, there's like, bad chairs like an like a small church and then on the wall of the double wide is like all of these um different gurus throughout history so you've got like jesus up there and you know like just name mahara you got all these different sort of gurus on the wall and then up 
front is like kind of a little stage and we're just sort of chilling in this um, double wide double thing. <laughs> and I'm hearing this dude like talking to somebody in the back room and it's not like they're in an argument, but it's like not like also like it's an interesting conversation that's happening and we're just like waiting and then all of a sudden he shows up and he walks in the room and he realizes there's people there. He basically opens up the temple for a couple hours, like once or twice a week. So uh, I'm reading the pamphlet of like what actually is supposed to happen. I'm like, okay, okay. And then he goes, okay, who, um, who's first? And I'm like, sure. So I go, go, I walk up to the front of the room. I sit down in an office chair, like a black Ikea office chair with wheels, <laughs> rollers on it. Oh my God, a rolling chair. <laughs> I love it. And then in front of me is this like six foot, diamond uh formation thing hanging from the ceiling not a diamond but like think think like um <laughs> like metal rods um with like magnets in the center that's on a string that he then spun and started moving around in a like a spinny, and then I he he came behind me, and I was just kind of like closing my eyes and going like, I have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sort of like starts like doing this stuff behind me, and I don't know if he had another magnet or whatever, and um, he starts like kind of doing his thing and I'm sitting there and he goes, okay. Um, he taps into like my physical vitality and he sort of has like seven or eight different categories he's dropping into. He's like, okay, you're, you're good there. You're like 95 to 98%. And then he went into all my organs and he was like, I'm going to check your organs. And then he goes, boom, boom. And he's like, okay, yep. You don't have any problems with any organs. And then he taps into sort of my emotional centers and he sort of goes, okay, you're you're at like 70% of like emotional capacity. He goes, do you want to like get cleared out of some of that? And I was like, yeah, totally. So he kind of does his like, I don't know. He's like kind of like going like around my body with his hands. And then he does like that. And then he goes, okay, he taps into how many entities I have. And I can't remember the exact number, but he was basically like, well, okay, so you have um, something like 14 entities. I was like, okay, I've got... 14 entities. Great. He goes, we're going to clear like those a now. Party. If you That's them, the whole can... crew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're having so much fun, yo. Like I picked them up everywhere. We're having a blast. <laughs> so he does this thing. He does this like entity clearing thing. And he goes, they came in like in this place in your back, like behind your scapula. And I was like, he's like, I'm going to like close it up now. And he like closed it up. And then he does a couple more things. Did you feel any sensations as this was happening well, in your body? Like when he closed it up, what uh, did you feel? No, I didn't feel like anything necessarily as he was doing it. I was kind of like, okay. And you know, like I was in the, the Christian church world where like people pray for you and then they're like mm -hmm. doing their woo-woo magic on you. And then you're mm -hmm. kind of like maybe feel something, but then you walk away and you're like, oh, like that was nice or, you know, like whatever. And so I was just kind of noticing, I was just like, um, okay, this kind of feels good. And uh, he finished. And when he finished, um, he like sprayed me with like this, I don't know, lavender salt water or something like all like my face and like a little spray ball. And I was like, I got up and I actually felt really good. And then I said, can I give you a hug? And he was like, well, yes, now that you have no entities, you can give me a hug. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Like the interesting thing was like that we ended up talking to him afterwards and my friends went into, and then he was like this, like, he was like this hippie from Brooklyn in the sixties that was like a bass player. And he moved to Maui and he had all these like downloads and he wrote some books and he had these experiences. Um, really like unique guy. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a musician too. He's like, Oh, and so we like had this bonding moment. But the crazy thing is like, I went into that double wide trailer in a season of time where I was really dysregulated a lot and I was feeling so many emotions. My nervous system was kind of whack. And the next day I flew to New York City for, I don't know, a week or something. And I was walking in the streets of New York City, which is which is 
with a kind of a dysregulated nervous system, New York City is never helpful in a sense because it's such an overwhelming city. But like I felt like like Eckhart Tolle level peace when I was walking mm. the streets of New York City for like the next three weeks, my life felt like pure Zen. Like I was just like, bzzz. so like whatever he did, I have no idea. I, it actually shifted something in me. And it like, it mm. almost like my whole being just went bzzz, like into alignment in a sense. And I'd never experienced anything like that ever. Have you guys ever had anything? You guys ever had an entity clear do the, do his thing for, over you? I mean, that's a no for me. <laughs> I've definitely like and I've had more way, of the, but... the shamanic experience, um, which I can mm. I can Same. share with you after this. But I want to reflect on this for a for a hot second. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I putting, mean like, it was like, come it, on, it, Nancy it, Drew, it, let's hear it. <laughs> what you got it, been it was definitely in the woo woo category for sure here's the thing i fucking love woo woo right ultimately we're floating <laughs> on a massive rock curling through space at millions of miles an hour held into orbit by a massive ball of fire life is inherently woo woo it is it just is it and is the fact it is, that it we is. like like our lenses or our, our experience of reality just goes like this because of what we've ever mm -hmm. been told since we were born but actually the inherent nature of life is woo woo and also a mystery that we'll never really fully be able to resolve totally. which is actually beautiful because if we knew the end of the book the book would kind of like lose its value mm -hmm. so it's like there's so much beauty in the mystery of the unknown there's so much beauty in the magic the taboo the woo woo the wild the wacky and everything in between totally. so like there's so much like because it makes this whole life so fun and it makes it like mm -hmm. so multi-dimensional multi -facet. so i live for these kind of stories and i also like go out and in search of things that are going to literally blow my mind because that's really the only thing that the only person i want to impress is sort of myself and also like mm -hmm. i want to like live to blow my own mind over and over again and even if it doesn't blow somebody else's mind it doesn't fucking matter like it's like it's, mm -hmm. it's my own personal experience and it's something that i can hold in the treasure chest of the stories of my heart so um i love these kind of things and mm -hmm. again like i want to bring it back to the feeling right like mm -hmm. whatever it was that he was doing there's a modality whether you call it entities or just un 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 expressed emotions right gabo Day, like Emily was there, we talked about recently in a podcast he did with Andre on the No Life Self podcast. He he talked about how like he doesn't necessarily believe in entities, right? That's the shamanic perspective. Mm. They talk about entities or energies that have latched on. However, this is also some sort of narrative that is outside of ourselves. It's something outside of ourselves has sovereignty over our body. However, actually he believes that it's 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 trauma that hasn't had a resolve that mm. sits in different aspects, different parts of the body and so it's just emotions that still need to be felt and there are certain spaces mm. that allow ourselves to tap into hey when you were six years old you processed that thing and took it personally because that was the emotional intelligence you had at the time so it yeah. actually didn't have an outlet and that emotion that wasn't expressed have to sit somewhere on the body and it sat right here so now mm -hmm. he's tuning in on a vibrational standpoint and he's saying right in your back there's an unprocessed emotion that now that 10 20 years later you're still kind of like oh feeling like you're carrying the weight of the world but it's actually just trapped energy it's mm -hmm. trapped emotions and so what he sounds like he's been able to do is help you alleviate some on more on the vibrational level recognizing that we have mentally physically spiritually sexually financially and multi-dimensionally there are many different mm -hmm. vibrations happening at once mm -hmm. and so he's allowed you to have a safe space to actually utilize his ability to see vibration as opposed to just a physical being. His language may be entities, but other person's language may be just trapped trauma. Um, and I also want to be mindful of the words of entities because entity, one, says that something outside of ourselves, and two, can create a fear. And that fear also is not serving. And so to somebody, an entity may be a detached, a detached word for it. But for another person, an entity can be something that we fear. And so I just wanted to speak into that. But then again, it's the feeling, right? Like you felt amazing afterwards. You felt light. You felt like there yeah. was a sense of inner peace. And so that's the truth of it. The truth is mm. in the feeling. Right. Like if you walked away from that and nothing changed, then that actually wasn't real for you because it didn't yeah. do anything. Mm -hmm. But the fact yeah. that you walked away and you were like, ah, then it was real for you. 
It worked. Mm-hmm. It was super Plaste- real. Placebo I didn't... or not placebo, it still worked. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. I didn't, Em, I didn't realize we are going to have like the full on woo woo coach joining us. Like, we're getting all our shit figured what you out. Think? Let's I'm not messing go, baby. I, know. <laughs> I love it. This is amazing. <laughs> No, yes. I, I really love how you like delineate stuff, Blue, because like, yes, you have this massive passion for woo-woo, but you also have this like very practical way that you um, help bring understanding to it in the world. And so I, I'm i finding you so like refreshing in on so many levels because you're like fighting for, you're fighting for it all. You're fighting for like mm. the simple explanation of like, um you know the the way that we can understand these and you're not throwing away like the woo-woo-ness of it and so like i find you very integrated um way of mm. sort of seeing these things so thank you for that mm-hmm. i appreciate it you know like yeah. I, I i definitely have played in many different waters of like um it believing it to be my it true for myself and then being projected as woo-woo from the outside and then that division that that judgment just creates more division division within myself division within mm-hmm. others and something that's really really important to me is unity is recognizing like we all judgment is rooted in self-judgment we judge what we don't understand and it's impossible for us to understand something if we weren't a there ourselves or b have ever experienced mm-hmm. it and so it's so yeah. important not to just like wash it out as like well um just because we don't understand it and also at the same time there's the discernment of weaving of like there is a lot of bullshit out there there is just a lot of noise there is people that are just trying to scam (laughs) you there is people that just want to take your money and are like pretending that they've got Uh these superpowers there is people that are going through god complexes there is people that are that are sociopaths Mm -hmm. like like, there's so many different Mm -hmm. layers to this game but i keep wanting to bring it back to the feeling in the body because i think we override it so much we like Mm -hmm. get so caught in our minds Mm -hmm. that we override what it is that we're feeling and everybody's going to feel different things like for example the story with emily is that her friend was like all in on it and emily was not feeling Mm -hmm. it but that was the truth of her friend right like her her friend believed it and therefore she probably um experienced benefits from that experience because the placebo of the belief was in the body and therefore the lens was seeing it through that specific angle Mm -hmm. so like i said at the beginning of this podcast it's not the truth there's perspective and perspective and perspective and perspective and just recognizing is it actually serving or is it actually creating more suffering more division more more hierarchy more like Mm -hmm. more uh separation in the world that's actually it's actually more problematic Mm -hmm. that can it be beneficial i love Mm -hmm. it yeah, I love from hearing that story, Brady, and like your reflection on it, Blue, a big thing I'm hearing that I really appreciate and want to just focus on is like the distinction between what's happening on the energetic level. Because at, at some point and underneath all of this, no matter what we're calling it, there's energy moving a lot of times is kind of this base level of what's happening is everything is energy and it moves around. And we like yeah. to put all these stories on that and labels and call it different things and create a morality of good and bad what we should be afraid of, what we shouldn't be afraid of. But what I love about what you keep bringing it back to, Blue, is at the end of the day, it's all love. There's nothing that we need to be afraid of. It's all within us at a certain like level. And I experience life itself as playing this game of constriction and release, constriction and release over and over in all these different ways. And so when you see that and understand that, you don't have to be afraid or even villainize the constriction because it's it's the other half of what you need in order to get the experience of the release, which is so it's orgasm, essentially. It's like everything is doing that. And so a lot of these experiences on that energetic level are these releases of constrictions. And then we feel so good. And we're like, oh, thank you for doing that. And it's important to know too, that yes, certain people can kind of help usher that in and bring you back to love and integration. But the magic is also within ourselves. Mm. And sometimes we just bring in these reflections that kind of help us release that. But it, I think there's a lot of power in the person that's experiencing that in their own body as well. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I agree. Blue, you got to give us something. You got to give some crazy story. Give us something like, give us something out there. <laughs> What's coming to mind? It's <laughs> this one seems good. Um... Oh, <laughs> All right. So uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, probably not, but I know Emily knows um, about, well, when I was about 25, I was diagnosed with a hereditary hearing um, disorder. Uh, and that's a whole story in itself. But um, 
I was like diagnosed that I was going deaf and it was progressive and getting worse and they didn't really have a cure for it. So that was one of the main catalysts on my spiritual journey of like actually looking in as opposed to becoming a victim of the experience, but to actually create well I asked how why did I create this what am I not listening to how can I reverse this I believe in miracles like that's the, my frame and that's my map of consciousness is how I operate I mean just being a human is a miracle in itself if you just look at the pregnancy process of fight but like there's this like non-physical being that can turn into a physical thing and then it's pushed out the stargate enterprise of what we call the vagina out into this dimension like <laughs> it's like it's a fucking miracle so I'm prescribing I, I, I subscribe to miracles I, I believe in miracles and so uh, that started me on the journey of like really going into alternative medicines because western medicine told me that it's incurable that like that's just what's happening and i just couldn't prescribe to that reality and so um i ended up going out to mexico and um i heard about this uh, shipibo healer um called justina and she basically um she does these what's called shanta extraction ceremonies or like shanta extraction and um i started like hearing about like what it is that she does and and she basically uh she spent two years doing a master plant diet with it with a plant called kamalonga and two years she spent in isolation on a very strict diet and she didn't really see anybody and she was like on her and she would people would bring her food and come and bathe her but outside of that she was just drinking this kamalonga drip, like tea every single day and she was merging her consciousness with this plant and this plant apparently mm. taught her how to do these specific healing modalities and mm. this is called a shanta extraction and so um i we would go what for is shanta consultation. what is what is shanta, shanta is like is like apparently it's like a trapped energy it's like a dense darker okay. or like negative energy that's trapped on the body and the shanta is the actual removal of it um okay. and and it's the so shanta your guy is, was a shanta extractor ready uh, got <laughs> it. okay okay entities. i got you i got you <laughs> um and she extracts it through her mouth and um basically what she does is she like finds the area where the, the shanta is, this trapped energy, <clears throat> and she latches on with her mouth like this. Or like for me, it was like right here behind my ear. And she sucks like <laughs> for a while. And it's quite painful. I'm like, you know, getting a hickey from like, like a 70-year-old legitimately. woman. No <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um, we out here. <laughs> and um, what she does is she then like the, the trapped dense energy manifest as a physical thing so she'll suck out like beetles live beetles newts nails um uh like newts? anything that like holds the energy oh but it, like it materializes out of the body so she did this this ceremony on me where we had we had sat with an ayahuasca we had sat with ayahuasca and it was at the end of the night it was like five o'clock in the morning i was exhausted she lays me down on the healing mat. I have the whole thing on camera. It's actually on YouTube. And um, and she she swishes her mouth with some agua de florida to cleanse like herself. And then she just latches on. For a while, she's like sucking at my neck and, and just right behind my ear. And then all of a sudden, she sits up and she's like, oh, oh, like that. And she spits out a fish bone, like about this big. And I could feel it was like sharp. Like when it was, when she was talking, it was like, it was like sharp in my neck. She pulls this fish bone. She spits it out. They don't, they're not allowed to touch it because it holds the energy. If you touch it, then you can, it can transfer to you. So they spit it out into this tissue. And then she goes into like full, like, oh, 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 like this, because she's taken on some of the energy. Then within two minutes, she's passed out. Like she passes out cold. She's like, oh, like this and completely laying down <laughs> they're they're like blowing like mapacho on her and spraying agua de florida you must be like her, oh my god i killed this woman down. with my well my they energy. gave me a warning beforehand they're like sometimes she can pass out don't worry she'll come back to you she's done this many times okay. like because oh, i didn't i wasn't like oh fuck i killed your healer i'm so sorry that you're like i have to deal with my shit and she's down and um and i'm just there watching like i'm like oh my god this is another scene with the movie of my life this is crazy and i love it and um she like comes back to and then she just sits down she's she's like old and tiny uh, tiny she's like four foot something and she and she just sits there with them and patch her pipe and she's like 
and I'm just, just like, smoking. what a fucking G! Like, like, such a <laughs> And so then they take, they take the fish bone and they put it in a t- tissue and then they take it and then they burn it. So they have to burn anything that basically gets extracted because it turns it from a non-physical, from a physical thing to a non-physical thing. That's the transmutation of like, the process of fire. That's why like fire is such a powerful um, element. I mean, all of the elements are super powerful, but it's, it, it's the power of the fire is the ability to turn what once was a physical thing into a non-physical thing. And so they burn, they burn the fishbone. Now I had other friends that went on the healing mat. I had a friend that, um, that went on the healing mat and um, had a beetle, a live beetle that she sucked out of him on his, off his back here. Um, there was another friend that had a nail, like a, like a metal nail that she sucked out. Anyway, it was like random um, objects. And um, after that, my hearing did improve a little bit, but then it mm. kind of went back to the way that it was. Um, and so I was in the inquiry of like, is this placebo? You know, is she mm. putting it in her mouth beforehand? But then like, I studied like uh, the Shipibo lineage and I've studied different master plant dietas and, and I've also sat with um, some of the master plants and I've done two dietas now and one with Robin Stano and one with a tree called Machi Mango. And I've received like massive benefits from the shamanic work. And so mm. um, ultimately, you know, it's still up in the air in the sense of like, well, my hearing didn't fully heal um Mm. and so did that really was that really that effective um Mm. and so it's it's i'm just not placing my label or judgment on it um but then i mean there's been an Mm. extension of that story where i actually recently was just in peru and i had a very similar uh ceremony an extraction ceremony where he didn't suck anything physical out but he actually um just sucked the distortion and then purged so he like fully like stuck all around my ears in my ear hole on both sides and would go like oh, and then uh, and like purge and purge and purge all of this energy out of my ears and since then i've noticed a significant difference in my hearing where like really? i can be in communication in the car and like i don't have to wear my hearing aids i'm not wearing my hearing aids all the time i'm being able to communicate with you guys like I and he, and he he says like he we only did two ceremonies. He was like because you've had it for over for almost a decade, it's going to require multiple ceremonies. So I'm planning on going back and having another um a, a, a doing a month diet with them and to st- for them to be like focusing on my Whoa. hearing. Um, but they feel very strongly that they can heal it. They're like, oh yeah, we can heal that, no problem. Mm. Um, so wow. that's some of my experiences. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say when a guy was sucking in ears, I was like, that's pretty kinky. Like, that's kind of hot, you know? And then he threw up and I was like, actually, that's not that hot. Well, hold on, right? The first ceremony, like, I wasn't, ex- I didn't know what to expect. And uh, and, and the, 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 the stuff that he puts in his mouth is kamalonga, which is the plant that the other woman dieted. Um, and then the, it's Agua de Florida and it's fermented garlic and fermented onions. And the smell was <laughs> rancid oh. rancid <laughs> now i'm just like i'm on ayahuasca at the time so i'm like super like Whoa. and then he's like oh, and yeah, no. smell and he's sucking on my Mm-mm. ear so then the second ceremony um the second ceremony i just plugged my nose and then i really enjoyed the whole experience like it was like oh it's tickling me a little bit like sucking on my ears a little bit so like hey, i managed yo, to hey. find I, I managed to find the kink in the in the, in the <laughs> yes <laughs> shifted your experience yeah. that's amazing i'm so glad you shared this story because i have i've heard this story before and i've watched the youtube video shout out to the youtube video go check it out if you're curious mm-hmm. um yeah, and it's really stuck with me, like as as an experience of magic, because there was that tangible thing of like the fishbone was there, and it's and a lot of times in these things it's kind of intangible. So there's room of like, did that do anything? I don't know. Um, and so there's something shocking about that material piece of this particular story. And one thing that stands out to me in hearing you share this, just knowing you, Blue, and your experience with your hearing and how pivotal that's been in you really developing your own unique magic that you have to bring to this world i feel like there's a whole nother layer to this conversation too sometimes where it's like we're coming at something results oriented with a specific idea in mind of what made it work or not work or what should have happened or not happened but we don't know the deeper layers of like 
you know, you, you're hearing getting a little bit better and then kind of going back and the timing of that. And then, oh, this time, you know, it worked better. There's, there's so much beyond the timing of that, of whether or not it's the right, if, if this hearing issue that you're experiencing as an issue, there's all these hidden gifts as you've spoke about so many times on your platform, you know, that you've received from this, this struggle that you've had with your hearing and how it's brought you into deeper feeling with yourself and it's unlocked so much. And so I think even the things that we experience sometimes as ailments or we're like, if only this could go away and then we're going to all these people, you know, to, to fix something, there's so much beauty in having that deeper surrender of trust of the big picture of the guidance of the timing of all of it to know that when it is time that that could shift. And if it's not shifting, then it's not the right time. And there's more for you to learn from this, um, this obstacle that you have in your life. And so that's something that really stands out to me in that story too, mm-hmm. in this, in this conversation about magic is, is the beauty that can be experienced when we trust the the timing and the bigger mm-hmm. picture of it all and take off that expectation of the, what when something worked or didn't work in our mind of what we wanted mm-hmm. the result to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. blue do you think that there's i love that em do you think like what is the inherent meaning in the ear thing if you could cons- like simplify it in is it is it is it do you think it's something like oh i i shut down listening to whatever and so therefore it happened or do you just think that it's it was part of your karma in this in this like lifetime that actually would produce something really beautiful in the fruit of what you would become and sort of learn in your journey and so it would like shed light on your purpose in the world what how mm-hmm. do you sort of how do you place that i feel like it's that sweet spot where karma and dharma sit side by side and what i mean by that is karma is like the challenge right like we've got to work through like somebody may feel jealousy and the other person may not have a jealous bone in their body because that person had come into this lifetime with certain karma to transmute that into a deeper level of unity and connection and detachment right so like that is their unique medicine for me personally i came into this life with this challenge other people have perfect hearing and so yeah it's my karma because it's like oh my god what the fuck like this is so challenging like I, I, why is this happening to me it's also allowed me to navigate the world for feeling, feeling, right? Like Albert Einstein talks about how energy is not created nor destroyed, it only changes in form. So if the energy is not going towards my hearing, it's got to go to another sense. And the sense that we don't mm-hmm. practice because we're so reliant on our five senses is the realm of feeling. And that's what I've mm-hmm. continued to reiterate throughout this podcast is mm-hmm. how did it feel in your body, Emily? How did it feel in your body, Brady? Like that's really actually the truth because mm-hmm. the body keeps the score. And so what mm-hmm. I've been able to do is actually strengthen my intuition, strengthen navigating this world through a deep level of feeling. And as I navigate through the world of feeling, it becomes like a bullshit filter. And this is why I think this topic mm-hmm. is perfect because there's so much bullshit in the spiritual world. There's so much Mm-hmm. bullshit in in the in the conscious community and if i can learn to listen beyond my ears right our ears are actually limiting we can hear but like are we listening are we listening with the entirety of our body and so i didn't have the privilege of fully hearing everything but i had the gift of being able to actually listen with the entirety of my being and what that's done is it's navigated me through this reality now in a way where I instantly sense the bullshit. The second I meet somebody, I'll be able to get a full read of why their emotional process is at, how much ownership are they taking for their experience? How much are they willing to grow? Are they looking at their blind spots? I'll see their blind spots. I'll sense it in the vibration that sits behind the words, not the words themselves. Because the words lie all the time. Energy never lies. Words lie all the time, specifically in Los Angeles. We all want to paint this perfect vision of ourselves, of who we are. And, uh, you know, it's literally in a pitch. It's like, Hey, how you doing? It's like, oh, I'm fine. That pitch tells me that you're not actually fine. But like, there's just this like blanket mask that we place on to present this buffet version of ourselves that the world is going to be able to eat up. But actually recognizing like, hey, how much have you integrated your shadow to allow you to stop stepping into this unfuck withable nature because you have made peace with the dark side of the moon of your own emotional waters as much as the light side of the moon and so there's so much mm-hmm. unspoken in the field that some crazy percent is like 93 percent of all communication is nonverbal. now are we actually listening mm-hmm. to be able to actually pick up on the messages and that's what the gift was presented so yes it's my karma it's also my service which means mm-hmm. my dharma too 
Yeah. yeah. And I feel like making peace with that darkness as you're speaking to is what can help us have discernment in navigating this world. Because a lot of times when we get taken advantage of, it's because there is this hunger to fix ourselves or be better or makes, you know, find the cure for something. And then that's where people can get really lost in the hands of the phonies when you're like, oh, there's more dark energy that I need to get rid of. And I've experienced in my own moments with plant medicine with ayahuasca that sometimes it is just the timing of of the mystery of it all of like Mm -hmm. nope not yet not yet not yet okay now Mm -hmm. and so just trusting that like whatever i experience as my obstacle or whatever i experience is this hardship within me or whatever my circumstances are to really just show up to all of that as i don't have to understand like this Mm -hmm. is this is what i need right now even the obstacles are like you said redirecting energy in a way that's going to be for my greatest good in the end and i can trust that process Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't want to jump in with another story because blue your stories are way too good (laughs) (laughs) i want to give us another one i'm like hey daddy mommy mom tell tell me another story (laughs) it's bedtime story time right i want to hear another story Oh. oh, you got another one that comes to mind. I mean, that was, I literally like the fit look on Emily's and I's face when you were telling the last story was like, what? Uh, oh. <laughs> I want yeah, another I got story. An, I, got another <laughs> I got another one. I think you're going to like this one too. Um, okay. So uh, I was at a women's retreat uh, in Bali and we had just wrapped up a whole week of like full activations and all the things. Now, bearing in mind, I had just gone out to Bali. I just shaved my head. Like, I fully reset, like, my whole energy and did, like, a buzz of my whole, all of my, all of my hair. I got to Bali, um, and I, um, we, we, we wrapped up the retreat with a, a, like, a ceremony. So we all sat in, we all wore white, and we sat in a circle, and we ate probably, microdose like micro micro microdose of mushrooms it was probably like you know nothing that you'd even really like feel that much like less than a gram and it was more so to just like commune with the spirit of the of the medicine as much as actually the medicine itself um and we sat in a circle we set our intentions and we placed in the center of the circle what we call a healing mat and a healing mat is ultimately like where you place all of your attention intention and just love that person that's laying on the healing mat and it's powerful what can happen when 10 women for example place their attention intention on one person and just hold love right like they can go through a transformation or experience so we were sitting in a circle and all of a sudden I like started to feel like this emotion coming up and I was like feeling sad and and I and I um I think I was going through a separation at the time and um one of the sisters turned to me and she goes would you want to go on the healing mat and I was like okay and so I go like bald little bluebies goes on the healing mat um and at the time I just changed I just I hadn't actually changed my name yet I was born Charlotte Victoria that was my birth name um and born in the UK and I had just gone through this massive rebirth experience when you know shaving my head and when I laid on the healing mat I just started crying like there was so much sadness that was just coming out and all the women were just like holding their hands up with in meditation and smiling it was dark at this point and then all of a sudden the best way that I can describe it is was there is a tear in the dimension (laughs) above me and it Mm. felt almost like uh, these blue beings kind of came in and were telepathically downloading a message to me, which I, at this point, I, you know, had never really experienced anything like this. And they mm. came into into my body and started like, almost like operating on my body, but through my hands and doing all these wild mudras and activations. And like, it was almost like they were pulling like zip files of memory that was sitting on my body and any distorted information were rewriting the codes. And it was like, and did a full scan of my entire body. Now, at this time, the women that are sitting and holding the space are all going through like, <laughs> like full, like, it was like, I was like the queen bee and the rest of the beehive were like going through this activation while I was like, <laughs> now all I thought was I was getting on the, I was getting on the, the healing mat because I was feeling like a sad bitch, right? Like, but like, I didn't know that I was going to like get activated through this like 
telepathic message from some blue beings that were going to give me like a full iOS update of my whole computer. So hmm. that it, it, all the women at the end, we all integrated that experience and they all shared that they saw the same thing. They saw my whole body completely decompose and then all of a sudden be rebuilt and light just shine out of my face. Just like, I'm like, no like fully like contorting. And I mean, it was just like so powerful. And yet in the core of my being, I trusted it. It didn't feel benevolent. It felt completely benevolent. It felt like I was at full peace. It was almost like a sedative experience where I was like fully, you know, uh, at peace and feeling held. And it almost felt like, it almost felt like a memory of a family of some sort. Like, oh, like there was an origination of the soul before it incarnated into this physical realm. And so it was like, it was almost like a homesick kind of feeling around that level of intelligence or that activation. Anyway, um, after that experience, I, we were all kind of just like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and all of us were kind of just mind blown. And then I got on a call the next day with a dear sister, Reverend Brianna Lynn, and we knows her. And she was in ceremony on the other side of the planet. And she said, I saw you blue on a healing mat, go through an activation in my ceremony in a vision. I saw your whole body decompose and then recompose with light shining out of your face. She confirmed it from a vision she saw on the other side of the planet. She confirmed that not all of us were losing our damn mind. And I said to her, what <laughs> was that? Like, what did you what, what did you receive from what that was? And she said, what I was shown was it's called the initiation of the crone, that there aren't many people within the community that are holding crone wisdom. And we need to have that crone wisdom available to the community to start allowing ourselves to tap into a deeper level of the access within our own, within all of our own bodies. And so she said, you got initiated into the wisdom of the crone. It was the initiation of the crone wisdom. Now, what is crone point, wisdom? Crone wisdom. So there's different, three different archetypes for the arch, uh, the archetypal journey that women go through is the maiden to the mother to the crone. The maiden is like, mm -hmm. you know, happy go lucky, fun, whimsical, thinks the grass mm -hmm. is greener on the other side, you know, can't stick to one thing, does many different things, you know, yeah. um, is young, youthful, seductress, right? Then you've got the mother archetype who's a little bit more deeply rooted within herself and she, mm -hmm. um, she's the birther of being, she's the birther of projects, she has a bit more sustainability, she's got less to prove, she doesn't need to validate her experience from the outside in. And then the crone, she don't give a fuck she knows exactly who she is she knows why she's here she's deeply suited in her wisdom there's not yeah. trying to prove anything from the outside in right like there's different archetypal journeys that yeah. we go through as women like that grandmother sage energy exactly yeah she just yeah. sits in the corner she yeah. don't need to say anything like she doesn't need to like mm -hmm. prove her existence in the space she knows who she yeah. is she's rocking on a chair and yeah. she'll also spank you when you're out of line right like so <laughs> so there's the, the, the different stages of the archetype so she said this was like initiating into the crone wisdom now, that was her perspective on what was happening. Again, that is not the truth of the capital T. If this was just happening to me, myself, and I, I'd probably question my sanity. However, because I was with 10 women that also saw the same thing, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, there's something here that's happening. And ever since then, um, and then that was the name when Blue dropped in, and that's a whole other story in itself. Uh, which blue represents beauty, love, and unity, which is my mission on the planet is to restore that. Um, and um, uh, later after Bali, all of the women went home. Majority of the women were in partnerships. After that experience, all of the partnerships ended. And it was like they had wow. gone through a vibrational shift and the mm -hmm. partnerships they were in were no longer matching them. And so it became this thing where all of the guys started a men's group because they didn't know what happened in Bali. Like everyone was like, what the fuck happened in Bali? So all the men joined together to form a group to question and process why all of the women ended the partnerships. So I think like, and, and, and bearing in mind Jeez. during the experience, the women are going like, Aah! like going through up mm -hmm. upgrades within their own self too. Now, mm -hmm. I look back on that experience and I haven't, I didn't share that for a really long time. I like kept that to myself because of the fear of the woo woo, because of like, you know, what my, my family find out, they think that I've lost my mind or, you know, whatever it was. And, and it's just got to the point now where it's like, I think that by sharing that experience, it's allowing people's perspective on reality to broaden a little bit and to tap into the magic of their own inherent nature. Um, and that we aren't the only species on this uh, or being able to communicate. We are, we are one tiny speck of sand 
in on the, all the beaches and all the world in, in, in contrast to the vastness of what it means to be just mm-hmm. a human on this planet. And so um, I share that with, um, with just full transparency and also like I don't need to mm-hmm. know what that was, but ever since then that was when Blue was born and my whole world has blown up around this um, form of service. And so I just, I just continue continue to serve and not need to make a whole bunch of sense of it and here we are (laughs) wow did you feel like you were did you feel anything change inside of you or it was just kind of like oh the season has shifted like did you walk away being like oh i'm a different person or did you walk away going like i don't want i don't want the hell that was but like uh, there's a different there's a new season and like i'm being escorted into it i just i've never ever ever been able to forget that experience and what it did was like it said like it went from like this was everything I've ever been told about what it means to be Mm. human and all of a sudden it went like this (laughs) and we can only manifest as far as our imagination is willing to go right Mm. so like my imagination Mm. also went from here to here and so now Mm. I actually believe that that I can have magic Mm. as the default that's just Mm. the lens that I experience life through and so what that experience did is it went "Mm," and fully opened Mm. me up to see my peripheral not just what's right in front of me based off of what other people told me around what life is totally you know that richard Rohr. i love the quote that he says that we don't we don't primarily think our way into a new way of living we actually live our way into new ways of thinking and it's these experiences that then shift the whole way that we our whole lens and the way we see anything and everything and so Mm -hmm. i mean i've had those experiences like i've had these mystical experiences where at the time I would consider it would be like God, right? That I sort of had like a two hour mystical love experience that I felt overwhelmed with this unconditional kindness. And I wept for like mm-hmm. t- two hours and walking out of that room after that experience, I'm like, I'm forever changed at the, what I know now is possible as far as the human experience, as far as some connection with spirit, divine, and everything that happens from now on in my life is somewhat through a lens of that original experience, right? Which is like Mm -hmm. foundational shifting. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. That widening is so important. There's Matias De Stefano, who both Blue and I have interviewed, and he's incredible. I remember said something about like the, the core purpose of this experience of the human experience and all living experiences is to experience Mm -hmm. like it's literally that simple and to experience everything for life force itself to be everything experience everything all of it and so that widening of what's possible it allows us to experience more than just this tiny sliver of what we think is normal and okay and what we're trying to make sense of the more we're willing to say hmm, maybe I don't really know and maybe it's a little more mysterious than I think we can actually have a much deeper richer experience of life which I think is kind of in essence what the purpose of all of this would be or why it would serve us at all is mm-hmm. to to deepen and enrich our experience of living mm-hmm. 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 the human so. experience is whack y'all it's pretty Yay! wild <laughs> what the fuck is happening when did we sign up for no this idea. why is it I mean, so challenging and so beautiful all i have no breath? idea <laughs> exactly. we all just found ourselves exactly. here and we're like like hey what's up and we're all like pretending like we've got something figured out you know we're all like oh yeah no i, right. I do this i'm really good at it i'm a master and it's like okay you know yeah like there's certain like studies and things but like do any of us really know what the fuck is going on? We're all just kind of making no it up idea. as we go along based off of some general yeah. narrative, you know? And it's like, it's kind of like, for me, the most beautiful part of the human experience is the others that I get to share it with, you know? Like the humans that resonate with me and that bring value and we and, and I and give value and like we create this beautiful reciprocity of like loving each other and inspiring each other. And I find that the p- most pinnacle points of the human experience for me is like, is, is, is the simplest moments of just sitting around a fire playing music or laughing hysterically at something so random or creating games around the house. Like it's not more is happiness, right? It's like, I mean, it's pretty obvious now in the narrative, but like it's actually in the simplicity and the human connections is where I'm like, I love being alive. 
this. Right. Yeah, and you don't need to make sense of any of it in order to love those yeah. moments. You just have to uh, listen to them. It's beautiful. It reminds mm-hmm. me, we'll jump into the next section, but it reminds me, Blue, I had this like little reading with this some um, Southern California, I don't know, numerology, astrology person. And she goes, have you heard of past lives? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, you don't have any. I'm like, I don't have any. She goes, well, you don't have any like earth lives, like past earth lives. She goes, you're actually from the future. I was like, oh, I'm from the future. Like, yeah. (laughs) She's like, you're from this race of beings called the Aryans or whatever. And she goes, you actually decided to come back to um, back from the future to have a human experience because the race of beings you're from doesn't experience emotions. It doesn't know what the human experience is like. So your whole your whole thing about being on the earth is is literally to have the human experience, to understand emotion, to understand what it's like to be human. And I have when she was telling me, I was like, I have no grid for like what you're saying, but there was something in my body that was completely lighting up and it actually sh- has shifted my lens on my life in the sense of like every moment is the point of my life, right? There is no get to moment. It's like the the massive breakup and the, the hitting the home run and the... um delighting in a lollipop and like taking a shit like whatever i'm just like all of it what is the point of my human experience like all of it like the pain Mm. the beauty the love the heartbreak the sadness the disgust the getting sick the all of it is the point and it's brought so much like a deeper level of peace i think in my life that Mm. i'm like i don't know what that was but like i'm here for it i am so here Mm. for it well should we tap into the next segment let's get social yeah let's get social or let's get social let's get social let's get social let's get social (laughs) we get social <laughs> All right, let's get social story. Tap into uh, Instagram, TikToks, internet stories, cultural trends, something out there in the social world in the vein of woo woo, magic, or phony. So, to kick us mm. off for this, I would love to get your guys' thoughts on just the general concept of witch talk. If if you're familiar, are you all I, familiar? I with need witch help. Talk? I need help. What is witch this, talk? This it's it's um. So in the world of TikTok, there's like all these kind of sub sub worlds of niches. And so they call them like whatever it is, talk. And so kind of I think last year there was this explosion of this sub genre on TikTok called witch talk. And it was a lot of young, like Gen Zers and teenagers. And it was just all this witchery of like, I'm doing this spell and I'm manifesting this thing. And just all of these, Mm. these like witchy things. And as I was watching it happen, I felt myself experiencing kind of two different feelings. One was like, this is so cool that all of these young, you know, the next generation is so interested in the spiritual. And like, there was so much clear consciousness that I was seeing on there and then there was this flip side of it that seemed really caught up in like the specifics of like you have to do this spell this way and make sure you use this type of cinnamon and this thing and like that seemed really interesting to me or like make sure you share this video 10 times to manifest whatever Mm. and so I'm curious on your guys' thoughts about the the trendification of witchery Mm. amongst our youth (laughs) <laughs> i'll hand it off to to um the the master witch herself blue <laughs> <laughs> i'm over here like stroking my invisible beard and listening <laughs> <laughs> um okay there's like multiple folds here one being uh share this 10 times and you'll get good luck or you'll manifest like your yeah. dream partner i call <laughs> bullshit yeah 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 Um, bony because there's an agenda right there's like a deeper Mm -hmm. layer here um there's an agenda to it and the agenda is for that video to go viral right so like how do we get that video to go viral well we'll tell people that they'll be able to manifest x y and z Mm -hmm. if they share this right but what that Mm -hmm. what that actually am hearing is that you want your video to go viral so you want it to be shared as many times Mm -hmm. as possible so how do you get that 
to be shared is you get those that like will believe anything that, that you share this it's like mm-hmm. those chain emails that went around in the 90s you know it was like mm-hmm. send this four times and if you don't send this to 28 people in your mailing list and if you don't yeah. like, scary lady's gonna appear on your ceiling and it's gonna haunt you yeah. you know it's like I, I i just don't subscribe to that that belief and i can feel the agenda behind it so that doesn't resonate as as as, mm-hmm. as resonance in my being um however i want to like something about witchcraft and rituals and um, really what a ritual is, is it's many small actions done with intention and attention, right? And Brianna Lynn would say this is in any intention plus attention equals magic, right? Things will happen mm-hmm. when you place your intention, your attention on a certain direction. So for example, like I have my altar, I sit in front of my altar, I burn some copal, I smudge myself and I clean I cleanse myself in the in the morning. I ding my dinging bowl and I set reset the space so from the dreaming to then my waking state I realign for my day. You know, I say my affirmations, my affirmations are focusing my attention and intention on the things that I'm grateful for. After I do that, then I will um, pull some cards. Now I could pull a random card or recognize that there's nothing random in the universe and that there's a synchronicity. So if I set my intention onto cards and I pull one, then it's going to be, give me a message that's aligned with my intention. So it really is just many acts of pure presence with an intention and an attention. So for example, if you're doing a love spell, right, you're sitting down and you write down all the things you're calling in in a partner, you wrap it around a candle and you watch the candle burn as it burns that piece of paper down to ash. Then you take that ash and you bury it in the garden and trust that by the next moon cycle, you're going to have manifested your dream partner. Now, what you're doing is just sending a concentrated amount of intention and attention into a specific direction in a quantum infinite reality. So by nature, because the radio tower is emanating a certain frequency and in a vibrational reality, we're just magnetizing that that's a mat- vibrational match. If you're focusing on that thing through the law and cause and effect, you're going to, things are going to start popping up in that direction. If you think about a, a white Ford is what a car you want to buy, all of a sudden, everywhere you go, you see white Fords everywhere because it's come into the forefront of the map of your consciousness. And so I think that there's so much power around intention, attention. And I believe that, you know, we can we can create things through ritual and it has been done for millennia in many different civilizations ritual has been the forefront of many different aspects of society even on our great religions ritual is still very much alive and so i think Mm -hmm. that there's just it's just a power on the simplicity of placing our attention and intention on a certain thing over a consistent amount of days and believing in the core of our being that it's actually happening now a spell or ritual is not potent unless the belief is behind it if you going on oh god i feel like such an idiot this isn't gonna happen blah, 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 blah. well then <laughs> yes your wish is my command it also will not happen because a, mm. a vision board is only a powerful vision board if you believe that everything you're placing on it can be made manifest and you are deserving of it and so if you if, if the energy is not behind it the universe doesn't speak english french or german the universe speaks energy and if your energy is not behind it then Mm. and then probably the ritual is hollow so mm. i think that there's something powerful about like that there's a movement that is happening that yeah. that is inviting people into a deeper place of intention and attention and at the same time there is going to be the woo woo and the phony and the agenda within these movements mm-hmm. too and so that's again yeah. where your discernment comes mm. in blue i think mm-hmm. like this this thing you're sp- speaking to like in the sense of like, hey, we're actually all doing magic all the time, right? All the we're time. Actually, we're actually all, time. all doing witchery all the time, whether if we call it that or not. Like, it's the truth. And, you know, I like to speak to that thing that you just said about like, whether we're trying to manifest something or um, desiring something, if we don't believe it, there's actually nothing behind the um, behind it. My thing is simple in that. Like, you know, I grew up Christian, so I guess I've got some Bible verses up here, right? Like they just haven't all deleted. A lot of them got deleted, but not yeah. all of them. I need, I need like one of those um, decomposing and recomposing experiences that you had. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the Bible says that like faith without deeds is dead, you know, which is just a really simple way of understanding. Like if you have some faith towards something, if you don't actually take inspired action, the thing doesn't magically appear it is like our forward movement in the in our life that actually mm-hmm. puts something behind the faith or the thing that we see right this the possibility so i'm just like if you believe like if if you have something on your vision board 
the way that you actually believe it's possible is you start with maybe you sit with the intention around it and you feel the vibration you do your little smudging and you do your woo woo thing and you say your whatever but then like you have something usually that drops inside your spirit and you're like oh i'm gonna call this person or i'm gonna do this thing or i'm gonna like make one step and i'm like that's when like the indiana jones thing happens where like you're trying to cross the the chasm and you take one step and the bridge appears like such is life right like will mm -hmm. you take the step or will you not take the step so i think it's a mm -hmm. way more i i love emily that witch back to your original like position i love that like witchery actually isn't three four hundred years ago where it's looked at now we're we're like we're we're not burning people at the stake anymore hopefully right like mm -hmm. that it's now actually some social trend i'm like i'm actually into it so to bring mm. that full loop, full, full, full loop yeah. back. <laughs> Viva la witchery! <laughs> Witch talk, <laughs> stamp of approval. Stamp of approval. <laughs> All right, Blue, do you got, do you got any, social, um, any social aspects that you've seen lately, like trends or TikToks in the, in the woo-woo vein? I did, actually. <laughs> so I sometimes <laughs> just go on YouTube and I just get myself in like, the, cr the algorithms like fuck me in my shadow basically mm -hmm. like like it's like they know like the things that i wouldn't want like one of my greatest fears is somebody standing on stage in front of hundreds of thousands of people and just reading my youtube search history or my like like we're like oh mm -hmm. really blue really and like the algorithms <laughs> catch me and there's just random videos that i end up watching and i'm like why is it one o'clock in the morning and i'm watching compilations of karens on airplanes having fits right like it's like how did i get here <laughs> so like <laughs> um, but last night I went on like a little bit of a, a rabbit hole around and it's so funny I didn't even put two and two together um, around uh, phony spiritual leaders that call themselves gurus um, and I wanted to like mm. understand the psychology of like what it is that they're doing and how they can get so many followers based mm. off of like something that is actually not supportive and is feeding division. I wow. mean, look at Hitler, for example, he believed that he was doing good and he convinced a whole nation that what they were doing was good mm -hmm. and tried to eradicate a different, um, a, you know, a, 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 a group of individuals. A so whole race. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it, it's super, uh, super fascinating to me, the psychology of these, of, of, of people that are charlatans or, that are phony and i ended up watching a sky life video sky cowens um she's a dear sister of mine and she has this youtube channel called sky life and she did a um a youtube video on a woman that claims to be the enlightened madonna that's like the words that she goes by as she's a guru and she's enlightened madonna see straight yeah. off the bat enlightened madonna guru like uh, these are like i'm like it's almost like a it's like an electric shock from the universe where I'm like, uh, uh, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my body contracts to that, mm. and so of course I click on the video, I watch the whole thing, and I'm like reading her, <laughs> right? Like I'm reading what she's mm. saying, I'm reading her answers, I'm reading her body language, I'm reading what she's wearing, and everything about the video for me was just off, like. Mm. Sky is also calling it the whole way through the video. She's like, I don't know if I'm like really believing what you're saying. You know, it was just, she was, she would know she would go into the basement and she's like walking around the basement and she's like, she's like, yeah. So there was this Amazonian woman that lived here and she used to do ritual and, and straight again, I'm just like, no, like it's just not landing for me. And so then I go into the YouTube comments and every single comment is like, ah, no, this isn't real. Like I feel it. And like, I think that the comments that, that of course there's like haters that pop in and they're just having a bad day and they want to take it out on you. And then there's people that are like, you know, pedestaling you. But for the most part, the comments give a general feel around how it's landing. And so the yeah. comments are actually very fascinating for me to read, specifically when it's somebody mm. else's video. It's so much like less attachment to what the comments say. And so like mm. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, going through the comment section and I'm like, yeah, everybody across the board is feeling this, right? So the that was fascinating for me to go into it. Um, you know, and she was like, Oh, I can walk on glass and that's what makes me like so powerful. You have to get in this meditative state. And then actually went on like YouTube or oh, Google and you could like see that there's so many different glasses that you can get that are actually not sharp or that you can actually walk on it pretty <laughs> easily or whatever. And so, um, yeah, again, mm. like that was just something that popped up last night and everything in my mm. being was just like, 
bless her on her journey, right? Because mm. I think the, there's, there's discernment and there's judgment and they sit mm. side by side and the judgment creates more division that says, I'm better than you, you're less than mm. because you're, what you're doing isn't real. That's problematic discernment mm -hmm. is born through judgment because your judgment will pick up on like that's actually not in resonance however the discernment piece is going like i haven't got anything more figured out than you this just doesn't sit in my body and so blessings on your path i'm going to go in a different mm -hmm. direction so that's actually a higher by oh, the, like the, the the yeah the higher octave of the judgment frequency is just discernment and so my discernment radar was going no and so I'm not going to sign up for mm -hmm. a coaching program with her. I'm not going to do one-on-one -on -one training. I'm not going to, mm -hmm. she even messaged me like not that long ago to do it, come on my podcast. My discernment is like, hell no. And like, bless. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that, you know, the, the, the judgment would go into the comments and be like, fuck this bitch. She should <laughs> do this, blah, 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 right? And because there's people that will say that. And then there's the, just, mm -hmm. the, the discernment that just goes, not feel it fully resonating. Yeah. Like, so there's the, yeah, the, the always, two different ways of navigating. It's always a red flag for me to the like trick, like look what I can do kind of spirituality stuff like the Marvel superhero. Like I can walk on glass and I can like bend this candle flame or, you know, what, that that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I feel like that's not again. I love Blue what you said at the very beginning of this that guide of like, is it creating love or is it creating division and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff? It's like, OK, what if it's real and you can do all these weird little tricks like magic tricks? what is that how is that serving humanity how does that enrich my life mm -hmm. like what is that actually creating that's a value so that's mm -hmm. always a big red flag for me is when it's like all mm -hmm. built upon the the mm -hmm. trickery mm -hmm. totally mm -hmm. i've got something in that vein blue of the whole like um spiritual guru leader thing and this might be i don't know how you guys feel about this person um uh, but I've sort of come across this lady, this collective called Esther Hicks over the last five years or so. And um, for those who don't know Esther, like Esther channels this, I don't know, collective intelligence thing called Abraham. And she sort of, um, she has these channeling experiences where she'll communicate with people, they'll ask questions, and then Abraham will sort of communicate through her, whatever the truth is. And uh, I... I have such a mixed experience in my body when I experience Esther Hicks and the whole Abraham thing. And um, there is there's like the side of me that's like, whoa, 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 we're bypassing. We're totally bypassing into the spiritual kind of thing. And then there's the other side of me. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like super tapped into like some deep like manifestation stuff. And so just to give you guys some context for like some quotes, like since I'm kind of the quote guy, uh, I'll read some quotes just to give you like a little bit of context for things that like Abraham would channel through uh, Esther. Uh, here's one. When something really, really matters to you, let it go. Say to the universe, you know what I want? Give it to me in the path of least resistance. Give it to me the easiest way possible. Give it to me in any way I can get it. Um, which I think is interesting because there's a thing like I think we all know when we try to grasp on something, it actually we actually kind of repel it in a way. Like, there, like there's another thing like in the Bible where it says like, hey, whatever you desire – uh, when you pray, believe that you've received it and it should be given to you, right? So there's like an element there where it's like, oh yeah, like set your intention, ask for it, then let it go. I'm like, yeah, like there's another thing she says, if you're not excited about it, it's not the right path. I'm into that. Um, when you believe something is hard, the universe dem dem demonstrates that difficulty. When you believe something is easy, the universe demonstrates the ease. So like sort of how you see, how you perceive is sort of how you experience everything. Um, and I think the last one I'll read is, uh, find something that makes you happy and fixate on it. That is the answer to all things. It's the answer to getting everything that you want. So here's the last thing I'll say, and I'm curious to hear sort of where you guys stand in this is like, I think what makes me feel so weird, even though I am a fan of a number of Esther Hicks teachings and ideas is like, why does someone have to create a, okay, this is the way I'm perceiving it. Why does somebody have to create a whole nother character to sort of channel some deep truths um, through her into the world 
why like what is it about like it feels like a split to me i'm like why does someone need to split in order to like have this character that's this guru to then show up in the world to be this abraham thing why can't you just be you and communicate this stuff into the world um so anyway woo woo magicophony i've kind of finding it on all of three, the three levels in this thing. But I'm curious to your guys' take or experience if you have any. Where am I off? Where am I on? Mm. I'm, I'm, I don't know a ton about Esther Hicks, but I, I haven't done the deep dive with it. But everything I've heard, I've really resonated with. Mm-hmm. And really, none of it, none of it has rung as like harmful or creating mm-hmm. division. So I think the teachings themselves from the ones that I've heard, I've really enjoyed. And as far as the just overall idea of channeling, to me, like it's one of those things that I kind of put in the category of like, I don't know what that person is experiencing within their own body to utilize that language to explain what's happening. Mm. And I don't really need to in order to get value out of the the teachings that are there. Mm -hmm. But I can honor and respect that in the truth of that other person's Mm -hmm. experience that it's it feels like this other entity that has this name, you know, and is coming through in that way and that that's what works for them and that's how they experience it. Like there's nothing that bothers me inherently about that or feels like I need to um, not believe in it or because I I put that in the category of like that's their experience and how they're describing it. Mm. And Mm -hmm. if the teachings resonate, like Mm. Blue, you know, said earlier, like coming back to how does this land in my body, Mm. how it got there, how they're explaining how they're receiving this information I'm not that concerned about personally. Mm-hmm. Lou, your thoughts? Mm, definitely, you're definitely, definitely more enlightened than I am. Emma, uh, anyway. Go ahead. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Ahead, I am not more anything. I am not more anything. Both of you guys. <laughs> women, I mean, we know women are more enlightened than men anyway. So like that's just a fact. But anyway. Not my quote. Not my quote. <laughs> it's, I'll own it. I'll, you could quote me. You could quote me. Um, Blue, are you familiar with Esther? Or is that not a world that you've lived in? Oh no, definitely have lived in that world. <laughs> I've lived in many worlds. I've tried on many hats, some of them made of foil. Um, and, <laughs> and I would say, um, I would have to agree with Emily. Um, like, first and foremost, I resonate with her message. I just, I just, I apply it as a fundamental law in my life and it works, you know? Like, mm-hmm. when I am like grasping, when I, when I'm holding something, but like a relationship, for example, and I hold it like this, it constricts the flow of energy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't allow the love to really live. It's to hold it with an open hand, to hold it nonetheless. Yes, I'm holding it. This is a claim that I am holding this thing, but I'm not grasping it. So it's like opening my palm so that I can actually allow love to genuinely flow. There are certain laws on this planet that I agree with that mm-hmm. are in the non-physical realm that she's speaking meticulously to. She is speaking yeah. fast, clear. She doesn't drop a word. She is fully mm-hmm. in a state or an altered state of consciousness that's allowing very nutrient-dense information to be delivered into a resonant part of my being that shifts my perspective that allows me to align with a life of beauty, love, and unity. So I would say that I resonate with her information or their information the uh, the concept of channeling i want to go back on to the point of what i originally made saying that we judge what we don't understand right brady like if you haven't been in an altered state of consciousness where you've channeled another being then the concept of her going into this altered state or this uh, this experience where another being is coming through her will seem a little bit like oh in your system because you haven't actually walked your those steps yourself and so then mm-hmm. that's where the judgment can start to sit in the place that goes like i don't know about this because i haven't experienced it however you're yeah. oscillating between judgment and resonance right your body's actually going like oh but i'm actually experiencing something that actually rings true to me so it's this like back and forth tug of war of what i'm reading in your experience which which um which of course it makes perfect sense because I think that that, that judgment is also healthy because that's also partnered with discernment and yeah. discernment is really important in this work. Mm-hmm. However, for me personally, because I do resonate and because I've applied and seen significant difference, I have deep reverence and respect. I have also been mm-hmm. in channel state. It's not something that's my default uh, way of operating, but I have 
been in moments where information has come through me where I was so close to the situation, I couldn't see a deeper wisdom in it because I can't see the bigger picture. Now, somebody or some being or some alien or some entity or can go and zoom way the fuck out and deliver a message that I couldn't access because I was too close to the situation. And so there has been times where, I mean, very recently, I was going through a very challenging moment. I was being attacked online. Um, and it was like bothering me and it was like painful because I knew my heart and I knew my intentions. And I was also in the inquiry on a very public platform. Um, and I was in the inquiry of like, why is this happening? What is this initiating me into? And I came to my altar. I was doing 40 days of devotion, 40 days of me sitting in front of my altar and doing an hour of devotional work before I start my day. And I came to my altar that morning, like I did every other morning for the past couple of weeks. And I just closed my eyes and I went into a meditation. And all of a sudden it was like, and I'm this, I'm not like, on anything and you know i'm just solely sober just woken up sitting in front of my altar and it was like like this and all of a sudden this african indigenous woman started speaking to me and she was very stern she had a very clear message for me and she was she was letting me know and i've never ever spoken in this accent before and she was letting me know that i also am standing with women that have had been have been misrepresented in the public eye. And there was Princess Diana was with me. There was Grace O'Malley. Mm. There was Joan of Arc. There was like, and she was like letting me know that I'm actually not alone in this and that I am representing mm. a message that's so far beyond my own individual identity or the mm. color of my skin. And, and it was like the, exactly the message I needed in that moment that allowed my whole nervous system to relax and rest. And for me to create very clear aligned action of how I was going to navigate the situation moving forward. And so um, it was a really profound experience. But what has mm. happened now is when I hear someone channel, whether it's Bashar, who's a man named Daryl Ankh that channels a, a, an alien called Bashar, or whether it's Esther Hicks with, with Abraham, mm -hmm. if the resonance is there, then I trust that in my body and in my being. Mm -hmm. more so like what emily's saying more so beyond how the information is being relayed recognizing yeah. we judge what we don't understand and actually i've experienced the channeling which gave me the message that my physical being could not access and it was necessary for me to zoom way the fuck out to be able mm -hmm. to see the wholeness of the picture um and so i don't believe it's phony at all i think it's woo, -woo and i think it's magic <laughs> i love it, it. i mean i love that i Heard love the from idea our hey. shamanic nancy drew <laughs> <laughs> i love that you know we do judge that we don't understand and i can feel that in myself and you know what i can also feel something in myself that actually doesn't resonate with everything that's being said and it's not it's sort of not my truth and mm -hmm. i think where i get cautious on the whole channeling thing is when channeling if you channel you're sort of automatically tapping into like the highest intelligence um you know i versus just channeling into sort of a wisdom channel right that has possibly actually could possibly have an ego attached to it i actually heard um eckhart tolle talk about you know channels being be beings being channeled is true but like there are also sometimes egos attached to those beings or even sort of egos the lens like the ultimate lens it comes out of right or the mouth that it comes out of has an ego attached mm -hmm. to it and i think i have this thing inside of me where i'm like you know what i can i can pull the beauty that actually resonates with me and i can let go of it not having to be the end all be all. And I think some of that is some like old school trigger too, right? Of being in the church of being like, hey, the guy on stage, he's supposed to know what the what's ha like what's mm -hmm. up, right? And I have to trust him. And it's kind of saying, no, actually I can trust, right? The internal knower, the heart is the knower of truth, body, yeah. the body intelligence, like we've been talking about all blue. So like that's I That's the discernment exactly. piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's good, you know, yeah. that it is the the layer of what you're saying is also to be aware of of gurus, you know, and use mm -hmm. discernment because mm -hmm. even that in itself, the guru temptation of thinking someone outside of you mm -hmm. should be listened to above your own yeah. inner knowledge and guidance is definitely something to constantly yeah. keep in check no matter who it is. Mm -hmm. I recently just, um, I was, uh, I gave a talk at the Conscious Life Expo and then they put me, they didn't ask me, but they put me on a starseed panel. 
And I was like, okay, what the fuck is a star seed, right? Like they just presumed A that I'm a star seed and B that I'm down. Um but but by the time I that saw I that you were on that and I had that thought, I was like, does blue identify as a star seed? <laughs> yeah. it, like, no. It, I, I was on my way to the to the talk and I put on my Instagram, if anybody could like let me know what a star seed did, that would be great because I'm talking on a tap panel in fifteen minutes. And um when I got up on the panel, like I was sitting next to Elizabeth April. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her work. Um and then there was other women on the panel and uh, they came to me and they asked like, what do you believe a star seed is? And I shared, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have a very un, probably an unpopular opinion here. Uh, but I have to tell you my truth. That's my commitment to like why I'm even here. And I said that I believe everybody's a star seed. I believe everybody has access to information that's far beyond their own physical life or their own like physical being. And I think that there is still a hierarchy system within the conscious community that thinks that somebody has it figured out because they're standing on a stage with a microphone and they <laughs> articulate themselves in a certain way and they identify themselves as a star seed, yeah. saying, "What well, you're a star seed and you're not a star seed, so you must be a muggle and then you're a ma- magical witch or wizard." Like that for me is really mm. deeply problematic. And what the piece yeah. here is, I want to be a stand for is that every single person has incredible miraculous capabilities now are they remembering that they may be not remembered they may be remembering or they may have remembered but there's not a hierarchy that says one person has it and another person doesn't that's problematic for me and the second that we Mm. put someone on a pedestal that they have the answer and they are the way that is feeding narcissistic tendencies that somebody thinks that they are god and the rest of us are sitting down at the bottom like lower part of Mm -hmm. here and um yeah. that was just really strong and it was like pulsing through me it's like this is why i'm not being put on this panel because i need to level the playing field with everyone and mm-hmm. um it actually was received really beautifully well and the, the, a lot of the feedback was that you landed the ship like quite literally like it's so important to land the ship and um mm-hmm. it just so turns mm-hmm. out that you know the next day i had someone reach out to me like so angry that I was on the starseed panel and they were like you think that you're a starseed and you think you're better than everyone else and I was a like starseed would never I, say that n- never <laughs> I was like oh you're totally not a starseed then obviously I don't know but like uh, no I'm kidding I, I I just thought it was hilarious the little girl in me was like but I was the only one that was actually preaching on equality yeah. you know and, um, yeah. and also yeah. uh, recognizing like again like there's this discernment of saying like being like actually no i don't want to be on the star sea panel that might have been a better answer as opposed to being like oh they put me on the star sea panel fine i'll just go and be on it you know i'm glad um, you did it and said all that <laughs> i just think Aww. it's important Sacred so again rebel. like need that. like this the second that somebody is like i have the answers like again mm-hmm. in church right there's like this person that's on a podium that are preaching to the choir but then behind closed doors are like playing with children right like it's like there's oh. so much distortion in religion yep. and like this this hierarchy energy that is like yeah. creating a patriarchal construction in our own mind and creating petty people on pedestals. This is problematic and this is rampant in the spiritual community. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is rampant. All of it. All the different religions, Christianity, yeah. woo woo, mm-hmm. all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get to the last section Rich. of the podcast. Yeah, it's close. Where we've out. been, hey, we've been deep already, but we about to get deeper. <laughs> This is the lighter, by the way. I don't know if you picked up on that, but I was like, (laughs) yes, yes, you did. (laughs) All right. Well, this is this is a segment where we pull we pull a question, and today's question is from the "We're Not Really Strangers" deck, and I guess maybe this isn't like that deep, but it's actually more fun. The question is, um, how would you describe me to a stranger? So you you guys can answer. How would you describe me to a stranger? And then we'll answer it for each other. Oh, amazing! If a stranger came up to you and said, "Wait, who's this like Brady Toops cat?" Like, what would you say? (laughs) I would say that Brady's like a big kid (laughs) with a big heart. who loves to just delight in mm. all the different funny aspects of life. Mm. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm. I would say. 
we just met. So this is your only yeah, no, experience no, no, no. I already meeting. got to read. I've already got to read. We're good. Oh. Um, I feel well equipped. I would say <laughs> Brady has the ability to be grounded in the 3D while also curious enough to open himself up to what he doesn't know in the magic while lacing it with a fundamental ability to play and dance throughout the mystery of what it means to be alive, while also it has a very strong magnetism towards others because of his relatability and his care and his attention and his presence that makes people want to be around him, even if he's not saying anything, because of how open and magnetic his heart is. Damn. I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. Wait, you don't know, Blue. I said this is Brady's like biggest love language is like feeling really seen and acknowledged. So you just made his whole day. <laughs> <laughs> My double Lee over here is like dancing. I'm like, oh, wow. Uh, wow. That really touched me, Blue, actually. Okay. That was um so beautiful. Thank you for thank you for that. Mm. it's just that i see it's just that my lenses pick up on you from our, our beautiful interaction so far mm. it's a great read yeah all right should we hit um should we hit blue yeah let's hit blue let's hit blue don't How hit we... blue blue, <laughs> blue doesn't get hit <laughs> don't hit me Aww. how would we describe blue to a stranger who is blue? Mm, okay. I would say to describe blue to a stranger that blue is, I would definitely use the word magic first and foremost. Blue is a magical human being full of laughter and light and joy mixed with the perfect amount of depth and wisdom and groundedness. Blue is deeply present and deeply loving and knows how to dance in both the the cosmic joke of it all and the mm. the making fun of it all and laughing at the absurdity absurdity of it all while also simultaneously seeing how profound of a gift it is to be alive and really really treasuring that mm. in in the depth with with the lightness perfectly mm. together that's how i describe blue totally that's I mean, I don't know how I, I don't know how I match that. I mean, uh, I don't think I need. Yes, I don't total need to. babe. Total babe. <laughs> total, total babe. Hey, straight yes, out of she's hot. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blue. Yeah, I think I would. I, I blush. Oh, I blushed. you blush. That's amazing. Yeah, I would think I'd say <laughs> very, very, very similar. Right? She's just like mythical creature that also is um the neighbor that you you want next door to like you know she'll um she's the type of person that would be like doing some crazy moon seance festival <laughs> and then would like you would also want her to like watch your kids when an emergency happened <laughs> you know like it's like both aspects and I think my experience of you over the last hour is like, I love how much you care. Um, you care about people. You care about the truth. You're a deeply passionate being. And, uh, you know, I think you go to bat. You go to bat for people and you go to bat for things that matter to you. Facts. Um, in a way that wants to bring everyone together, right? Um, mm. and it may not be Blue's beauty, love, and unity. Come on, Boom. baby. The beauty, end. love, and unity. That's, That's exactly what you are. So I don't know if you noticed, but um, probably not. But God gave me a chin that makes a heart look <laughs> <laughs> that makes a yes. heart look. Oh, wow! Yes, wow, That's great. it's on my face. It's part of the mission. That's amazing. Brady, thank so you. Good. I feel like oh. I could literally feel my heart. You know, like the Grinch, and he's like, oh, my heart's grown a size and a half. <laughs> like, uh, like, my heart was like. Well, you're delightful. 
I, I had a friend actually that said he met you like a number of years ago at like a ceremony and he, he was like, Blue's the best and you're going to find that out. And I've found that out. I'm like, it's true. It's definitely true. I can yeah. confirm that back to him. So, uh, well, em- last one, Emily, how would we describe Emily to a stranger? I got this. I got this. <laughs> Emily, Emily is multidimensional and multifaceted. This woman is so good at anything she puts her mind to, whether it's singing, whether it's improv, whether it's playing or dancing or connecting with kids or animals or having deep conversations, being wildly sexy and also saintly innocent in the same breath. Like she has such a wide range and she has the ability to to master really anything she puts her mind to. Um, and it's so fun being able to witness Emily within the community because she is wearing many hats. Like sometimes I see her at an event and she's running the audio and the next time I see her at an event and she's mm-hmm. hosting the event and the next time she'd be like podcasting. Uh, there's just so many different uh, access points to the magnificence of the diamond that she is. There's just so many faces of the same diamond, but a diamond nonetheless. Um, and I would say that uh, there is such a permission slip with uh, where everywhere she goes at any time that she's come into my field because she's always l- feeling into the edge of her comfort zone and going in that direction with a courageous heart. And so that always allows that every time I connect with her, there's more gold that she has to offer to the space because she's been so curious and inquisitive to how she can meet more of herself. And one of the most devoted humans on the path because there's no on and off switch around her level of devotion to her higher self. She just is. It's not mm-hmm. as it's not a season it's a life's work with her Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. there's such a consistency around the way that she chooses to show up to the world that allows my inner masculine and my feminine to rest in her presence Mm. let's go thank you Wow. I love this. It's one question. of my favorite things to do is just to reflect the beauty I see in people. It's just like the oh. best. It's such a good way to close this out. It's so good. I love oh. it too. Oh, thank you, Blue. Wow. Uh, my so my sweet. thing about this question with you, Emily, is I've actually had to tell a lot of people about you because like who don't know you. And like what I mm-hmm. – because they're like – I'm like, I'm doing this podcast. I'm doing it with my friend Emily in LA. And they're like, who's – who's Emily? And I'm like, I think the simplest way for that I've explained you to people is like, she's like kind of like me, but like in female form. And <laughs> like, she's deeply curious and deeply devoted to her path and is like this ultimate investigator. And like, if you think that I try all these things, like she's like that, like 10 times and like even way weirder. And I'm like, she's a, she's total babe and like she's the most one of the most creative people that i know and um the way that she differs from me is like i'm a total like three in the enneagram and she's a nine so like she could stay in bed forever and just cozy up and like be super chill but like um when i say basically like you're kind of like me but in female form people like oh yeah okay i know i know what she's (laughs) like so i don't know that feels like no, that's I don't know if that's a compliment to you, <laughs> but it's a big compliment from me. <laughs> yeah, I, from you, I feel it definitely is because I think you feel highly about yourself. So I just I really it. like myself. I like myself. <laughs> You got to, you got to, you got to live with yourself for the rest of your life. <laughs> right? You better, exactly. you better make friends with this play, this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're oh, you're you such a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, last part of the the wrap up, the wrap up with woo woo, magic or phony. Any final words, either of you? Um, yeah, I think the biggest takeaways for me looking back was um, just leaning into that understanding of the guidance of our own body amidst all of this and seeing it as an opportunity to play and have different experiences Mm -hmm. and widen our range of experiences beyond trying to really figure out logically, like what is the capital T truth across the board? What's right? What's wrong? What's good? What's bad? Mm -hmm. Like if we can get outside of all of that and just approach everything with a balance of curiosity and discernment and really filter it through our own 
our own intelligent system first and foremost and know that we're the ultimate creators of our reality and we get to decide what we let in and what we don't. And knowing that we also have a lot of power too of whatever we do let in and put our belief around and our intentionality around, we also can influence that and make it real with our belief in it, that that's powerful as well. So there's a lot of different factors at play and we have a lot of, we have a lot of power in all of it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just for, for play and we can hold mm -hmm. it lightly mm -hmm. and just enjoy it all and be curious about it all. That's my mm -hmm. takeaway. Yeah. Mm. I would Good really agree. That. I think that, um, we all have a passion, I think, to protect others and ourselves from the phony and a desire for the authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, uh, I love the woo woo mysterious sides of life. Like what would life be mm -hmm. without it? And like life is 1, so boring percent. without some, yeah. this is, this whole thing is a mystery and how we want to like describe it and frame it and name it. Like everyone's going to talk about it differently, but to come back to a lot of the points that you said blue that I really resonate with is like, Hey, you can trust your own being. You can trust your own intelligence. You can trust your own intuitive knowing. Pay attention to your body. The heart is the knower of truth. Um, and that oftentimes, like, like, I think that's one of the biggest things that uh, my spiritual path has been about, like, knowing that I can trust the thing that's inside of me. I don't have to, like, blindly trust the thing mm -hmm. that's outside of me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I'm always down for another weird experience. So if you need somebody to go with you, like I'm talking to you, Blue, and I'm talking to anybody <laughs> who's listening to this podcast, if you're trying something weird and you want somebody to join you, hit me up, yo. I'm down <laughs> to give it a shot. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I, okay, so I'm trying to find this like audio clip um, to play for y'all. Um, okay, yeah, this is how I basically opened my talk at the Conscious Life Expo. And I want to play it for you. I literally put this on the speaker um, and uh, blasted this as the start of my talk um, in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> so I, I, I'm just going to paint the frame. I basically stood up on stage. I, I said, before I start my talk, there's an audio that just really rings true to me. And I just feel like it's it, it, it's an opportunity for me to transmit a message to you. So my invitation for you is just to listen with your heart and just allow this to be received. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I never have. I never really have. And, uh, and you guys have always been supportive of me for that or while I've done that. And thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> I started with like, that's the ah, best. I don't know what I'm talking about. I never really best. have. And so, like, it's about evening the fucking playing field, yeah. right? Like, as much as there are witches and wizards and sorcerers and gurus and aliens and alchemists and everything yeah. in between. The second we start believing that we have something that somebody else doesn't, we are mm -hmm. feeding the division on the planet. We are mm -hmm. feeding the wars that we experience on the collective scale. So it is so important to dismantle any hierarchy that operates within our own minds of even when somebody comes across and it's super phony and it se seems so out there, mm -hmm. if even in that moment, not making them less than because of their expression and so i just want to continue to put emphasis on that piece and also at the same time there's that discernment of like what you let in like i don't let any random person massage me just because they want to put their hands on my shoulders like no i don't i don't like allow myself, i do for but example, we're different in, anyway <laughs> but <laughs> In, in sexual in sexual interactions though like if i'm like having sex with someone i do not allow someone into my energy field unless i would want to be them right like there is a higher level of discernment of what you allow into your field into your mind into your body into your heart into your soul mm -hmm. like it's so important and there are so many people that are projecting they're going to come up to you and be like oh i believe that you have this thing and you're this and that 
da, 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 but actually it's just a projection of their internal consciousness. So again, feel into your body. How does it resonate? How does it land? How does it feel? What is the information doing? Is it, al- is it allowing you to live a more enriched life or is it creating more contraction and division? Be mindful of the energy, not necessarily what the five senses are telling you. And this is going to be a great tool for you to navigate this world because this world is filled with everything, anything and everything mm-hmm. that you could ever imagine exists on this planet. And depending on what's going on internally is going to attract and manifest that external uh, reflections. And so if we continue to refine and allow ourselves to listen to our bodies, we'll start being guided in directions that can really serve us. Mm. She said it, y'all. Preach. Blue said it. She said it. We believe it. We into it. Thank you so much, Blue, for joining us on this episode. It's been such a delight having you. Ah, such an honor. Thank you for having me. We'll have to do it again. Yeah. Well, Emily, any final words? Just gratitude. Thanks for being here, Blue. Thank you, Brady, as always. And thank you, everybody, for listening. This was so, so much fun. And I'm just I'm just tickled to death every time we get to do this. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Later, everybody. Hey, thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you for spending some time with us. If you want to find out more about what's happening with Soul Games, find us on Instagram at The Soul Games or go to thesoulgames.com. We'd love your help in rating and reviewing the podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned to all future episodes. Hey, and if you're loving these episodes and they make your life a little more beautiful, please consider signing up for the paid subscription of Soul Games, the podcast, or even donating through listener support. Yeah, we'd love your support. All monthly subscribers will get access to bonus content, previous episodes, and be the first to know about exclusive upcoming opportunities to join in on the Soul Games community. Yeah, we're really excited about the Soul Games community, where you'll have a chance to connect with myself, Emily, and others who are on a similar journey of exploring new ways to enjoy the game of life with a touch more soul. Well, we appreciate you all so much, and as always, it's a pleasure to be with you. We are your hosts, Brady Toops and Emily Capshaw. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks. Love you. Bye. Soul Games, the podcast, is a production of Soul Games Media.